Hi, I'm Pam England, and today I'm going to be reading to you from a chapter in my new book called um, Birth as a Journey of Initiation, and this chapter is called um, You Are in a Ceremony of Creation in Your First Trimester. Feeding the initiate is part of every ceremony of initiation, and this ceremony begins in your first trimester as you embody the profound marvel of creation in your warm, dark womb, a miracle is unfolding by the day, even by the minute. Um, I'd like you to enjoy some excerpts from a book called The Spark in the Machine by Daniel Kawan. In just 12 weeks, the minuscule embryo in its hidden world undergoes 3 billion years of evolution to form a human. The most astonishing journey you can imagine begins with a division of a single cell by dividing again and again and specializing in miraculous ways grows into your baby all 10 million cells. The embryo is a copy of an evolutionary blueprint and so it forms an egg. But this egg is extraordinary. It has not one but two yolks. And where the yolks meet, a flat disc forms resembling the yin-yang symbol. Everything that forms the baby will come from one side of this disc. And more happens within a space of a millimeter, which is about the size of the comma you just passed. Your baby's placenta is an amazing organ. It takes 12 weeks for the blood supply between you and your baby to be established. From then on, the placenta just keeps growing until about 20 weeks. It reaches its full size by 20 weeks. And then it will function as your baby's lungs, kidney, liver, and stomach, and also make hormones. Now, until about the 16th week of pregnancy, did you know that your placenta is actually bigger than your baby? I mean, nature has provided a placenta that is so rich in, in its vascular development that it can feed your baby throughout the entire pregnancy that in the beginning, it's even bigger than your baby. During the first trimester, the placenta is developing a healthy vascular system composed mostly of protein, which is why you need to eat adequate amounts of protein in the first trimester. You don't have to eat heaps and bushels of protein. You just have to eat three healthy meals a day that include protein, carbohydrates, and vegetables. That's all. In this picture, this is like a 16-week baby, roughly. But you can see that the placenta is actually bigger than the baby um, up until this point. And then the baby starts to get bigger than the placenta. I like this picture because it accidentally turned into looking like an acorn. So then I um, decided to make an image of, look, all the different kinds of foods that you can see the foods trickling down into the bloodstream of the mother where when it's picked up in the in the blood vessels of the mother, it goes down and, and it's absorbed in this smaller capillary bed and it goes right down through the cord into the baby. So I, I like this image of just imagining all this food trickling into your baby. When you miss a meal or you're dieting in pregnancy, you're still breathing. So your baby gets oxygen, but it doesn't get any nutrients. And that's okay if you're growing an air plant. You often hear that the placenta provides nutrients to the fetus. However amazing the placenta is, it is not a garden or kitchen that magically produces food to feed the baby. It's only capable of sending nutrients to the baby that it absorbs from your blood after you eat nutritious food. So you have to start thinking and picturing when I eat healthy food, I am feeding the placenta so that it can feed my baby. And let your emergent mother self acknowledge without guilt, without guilt tripping yourself, that also when I miss a meal, my baby also does not eat. are four appetizing rituals and recipes for your first trimester and for all trimesters. And as we begin to revision and honor the ceremony of creation in the first trimester and pregnant pregnancy, let's create new traditions, which include gifts to celebrate the baby that is coming. And those include things like a crock pot or an Instapot, simple recipes, a cookbook or groceries. 
So the first ritual is a new morning ritual to fill a crock pot at breakfast and dinner will be ready for you by the time you come home from work. So if you use an Instapot, it only takes about 30 minutes to create the meal. So you could do that when you get home. Now, I'm still trying to learn to use an Instapot and I'm not very successful. So I'm still preferring my crock pot. Now, the crock pot is a healthy choice because it It slow cooks, which means it saves the nutrients, the vitamins, and it also really tenderizes vegetables, beans, and and meat. It's on low temperature, so you can leave it all day. won't cause any problems. You don't need to turn it over or stir it. Just the food will be ready when you get home. So all you have to do is this. Choose a recipe. There's tons of recipes online, too. Buy the ingredients chop them up, throw them in the crock pot, cover the crock pot, plug it in, turn it on, and you're done. Now, some crock pots also have a timer, so you can time it for when you're going to be home. So while you're at work, your little crock pot is busy making your meal for you at home. It takes about five to eight hours to make a meal. So when you come home, it'll be ready. You can just make a salad or butter up some bread, um, make some rice to go with it, and you're good to go. The other great thing about a crock pot, depending on the size that you buy, is it can make up to six to seven, even eight servings. So you'll have more food. You can take it with you for lunch, or you can eat it the next day, or you can even put it in the freezer and have it for a future meal when you're too busy to cook again. So Ritual number two. Here's a common problem and an obstacle that keeps moms from eating well in pregnancy. Many moms are working a lot. Um, We're living much more hectic lives. So by the time we get home with traffic or picking up the kids and we're feeling tired, we're feeling so hungry that we stop and get fast food or takeout food on the way home because we don't want to stop and shop or stop and cook. So the crock pot is one solution to that problem. But I'm thinking about the four o'clock tea as an English tradition that's been around since about the mid 1800s. And the idea is to have a little boost um, to get you through the last part of the day. So around three or four o'clock, you can have some uh, tea, bring a thermos of tea or a tea bag with you and a snack. It could be a corn muffin, half a sandwich, handful of nuts is good, or some yogurt with granola. And by doing this, you get a boost of protein and calories that will get you through that hunger. So you can get home without stopping for junk food. And by the time you get home, you can just open your crock pot and ladle up whatever you've cooked up for your meal that night. The third one is to assemble a casserole on the weekend so that you either cook it on the weekend and just warm up the portion you want, or you can even cook it when you get home because it's already made. The other advantage of having a casserole for the week is you can take servings with you to work. Another idea is to make a quiche, which can also serve up, you can eat that cold. You can serve up a piece for your for yourself at lunch or a quick have a quiche and salad for dinner when you get home. And all of these things will help you get through this problem we're all having, just not having the leisure to cook all day like we used to. So bon appetit and Please join me for my next video in this series on nutrition and pregnancy. Bye-bye.